The Cyber Essentials framework is going to be changing in January 2022. Find out in this video what else your business needs to do to stay compliant. But before we start, my name is Jonathan Edwards and I'm a business IT consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. We help businesses with their IT support and the cyber security. So what is Cyber Essentials? Well, Cyber Essentials is a government-backed scheme here in the UK that was designed to help businesses avoid becoming the victims of cyber attack. As you'll know, cybercrime is becoming huge. But the problem is, most businesses don't have the basics in place to help protect themselves. So when we talk about cyber essentials, the key word really is essentials. It covers just the basics. And your business really needs to have the basics in place. There are five technical controls that your business will be tested on. Those five controls are firewall, secure configuration, user access control, malware protection, and patch management. Now, I've created quite a long video on my YouTube channel that tells you all about those technical controls and what your business needs to do. So after this video, go ahead and watch that. But this video is all about the changes to the scheme, the additional controls that are gonna be added to make sure it's still current. As you know, technology changes all the time, so the scheme has to be kept up to date. It was launched in 2014, and now we're going into 2022, technology is a different place. So without further ado, let's look at each of the changes that are gonna be happening to the Cyber Essentials scheme from January 2022. The first change to the scheme is all about home devices and specifically home computers. With the COVID pandemic, lots of people now work from home, some of them permanently. Some people don't use work devices at home, they just use their home computers to do work activities on. I know business owners are quite happy for this to happen because it saves them money. It means that they don't have to buy them business computers. But from January, these home computers are gonna be part of the scope for Cyber Essentials. So if you've got people working from home on home computers, those computers will have to go through the Cyber Essentials checks. That means they'll have to have antivirus on. They'll have to be regularly maintained and patched. So if you're one of these business owners who have been quite happy to let people work at home on home computers, now is the time to sit up and take note. As an IT support company, we always recommend that businesses provide staff with company-owned devices. That way, that device can be secured, supported, and maintained. There's no gray areas. Another change to the scheme that involves home workers is that the home routers are no longer part of the scope. We've completed some assessments in the last 12 months and we've had to check each home router. We won't have to do that going forward because they are no longer part of the scope. The second big change to the scheme involves the use of cloud services. Now most businesses that I know use cloud services for some part of the business. There's things like Microsoft 365, the Xero, the Salesforce, to name but a few. Indeed, most businesses use multiple cloud services for their business. Unfortunately, lots of businesses think that when they use these cloud services, the business is no longer responsible for the security of it because the cloud service provider will take care of everything for us. Unfortunately, that's not the case. When we use cloud services like Microsoft 365, it's not secure when you start using it. You've got to apply additional configuration to make it secure. That's why cloud services are now gonna be part of the Cyber Essentials scope. So how will this work in reality? So how will this work in reality? Well, take for example, Microsoft 365. They'll be in check in place to make sure that the current active mailboxes are all for people who are still with the organization. I've looked through countless Microsoft 365 tenants and there's lots of people who still have active accounts who left the business three, six months ago, even longer. So that will form part of the Cyber Essential scope. Also, people with admin access to these cloud services, do they still need it? So we'll have to review all the admin access to all the cloud services. That will be another change to the scope. And there's another huge change when it comes to cloud services. 
If your cloud service provider are responsible for some of the cyber essentials controls, things like patch management, secure configuration, then you've got to get evidence from the cloud service provider that they're actually doing it. So there are two big changes to cloud services that don't exist in the scheme today. The third change to the scheme is the addition of multi-factor authentication for cloud services. If you are a regular watcher of my channel, you'll know that I will highly approve of this addition. From January 2022, any admin account using cloud services must have MFA enabled. From January 2023, any user account using cloud services must have multi-factor authentication enabled. The only problem I've got with this is, is the time. January 2023 is still over a year away from when I'm filming this video. Now, people should have MFA enabled. User accounts, admins, it should be happening right now, not in January 2023. But it's good that it's now part of the scheme, or it will be. Now let's move on to the fourth change to the scheme, and it's all about increasing password security. It builds on from the MFA in the previous section. So if you're accessing a service and you don't have MFA enabled, then the password requirements go from eight characters to 12 characters. Or you can use eight characters, but it can't be one of the commonly used passwords, like the word password. So many people still use basic words as their passwords. This won't be allowed to happen under the changes to the scheme. There's also going to be some guidance on how you should be creating your passwords. What you should be doing according to the scheme is creating three random words for your passwords. So as an example, planet football bulb or shark chicken blue. You get the idea. That's the new guidance on what you should be using to create your passwords. That way, they're quite complex and you're more likely to remember them. The fifth change to this scheme is the inclusion of thin clients. So what is a thin client? Well, a thin client, also known as a dump terminal, is a little device that usually connects to a cloud service. It's not a full computer. So I know a lot of businesses who have never really included these in their security and maintenance. I know a lot of thin clients not having antivirus software on, not really being kept up to date because they don't really store information on them. Well, we're going to have to sit up and take note now because the thin clients are going to be part of the scheme from January. So we need to secure them, we need to maintain them. Now onto the sixth change to the scheme and that involves smartphones. Now I know so many businesses who allow their team members to access work email and work data on their own personal smartphones. So if you're one of these businesses, then you need to sit up and take note because from January, smartphones will be part of the scope. That means we've got to ensure that everyone's smartphone is secure and up to date. Now, this can be a little bit of a can of worms. It can be really difficult managing everybody's personal phones. I know lots of businesses who simply don't allow it. They don't allow people to have work email or work data on the phones. If you want people to have access, then you've got to look at maybe providing them with a phone. Otherwise, we've got to test people's personal phones. And a lot of people don't like that. The only caveat here is if you're using people's work phones as an MFA device, so maybe they've got the Microsoft Authenticator app on, or they use a phone to get a text message for MFA, then that means that phone won't be in scope. It's only if the phone is holding corporate data. The seventh addition to the Cyber Essential Scheme is guidance on backing up. Now, if there's one thing that I would love to see as part of the Cyber Essential Scheme, it's robust testing of companies' backup. You could pass the Cyber Essential Scheme without having any backup in place because backup doesn't form any part of the Cyber Essential Scheme. That's a bit crazy in my mind because one of the best ways to recover from a cyber attack, such as ransomware, is by using your backup. From January 2022, there will be guidance only about backups. There's gonna be no tests or anything like that. It's just Cyber Essentials will offer you guidance that you should have backup in place, which goes without saying, really. Now we move on to number eight, and that is the addition that all your servers and all your networks are now gonna be part of the scheme. Now, you might be watching thinking, well, 
isn't it anyway? Sometimes businesses have excluded certain officers, certain networks from the Cyber Essential Scheme and that's not going to be allowed going forward. So when your business is getting checked, it really is going to be your entire business network that is going to be part of the scope, which makes perfect sense to me. So they're the core changes to the Cyber Essential Scheme starting in January 2022. Overall, I see these changes being really positive, if not a little slow. I think MFA for all users in January 2023 is not enough really, it's a little bit slow. And I do wish there was more in the scheme about backup. But overall, the scheme is a good one and your business, if not already, should definitely go through it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you again soon.